10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, episode 362. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 362 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. Hope you're all doing well out there, getting a good start to summer happening. And we are starting a new series for the month of June. This one is going to be all about tune-based learning and some of the things that I think about uh, when I'm in the practice room and how I use tunes as a vehicle for improving my playing. And actually, this is going to be in preparation for a new ebook that's coming out. Uh, it's going to be called 10 Progressive Etudes on Donna Lee, and it's all about tune-based learning. So we're going to go over the first four etudes out of the book, and we're going to talk about some of the concepts behind it and how I use this stuff in the practice room uh, to really gain a lot of ground and develop new skills really, really quickly. But before we get into the show, as always, just wanted to remind you, this is a listener-supported podcast, which means we rely on people just like you to keep us going. We do not have any advertisements on the show. Instead, we rely on a small monthly donation, and we use the Patreon platform for that. Uh, in return for that small monthly donation, you do get an etude and audio and everything from every week's episode. So that actually means that in this month's case, you're going to get the first four etudes from the ebook for that Patreon membership, which is a pretty good deal. So if you are interested, go over to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners, and you can get yourself signed up today. Or you can simply go to patreon.com and search for the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson. I wanted to give a quick shout out to our new $5 patron, Oscar, this week. Thank you so much for joining up and becoming a part of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson family. So again, 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners, or go to patreon.com, search for the 10 minute jazz lesson podcast. All right, let's dive into the episode. So episode one is going to be all about the first etude in the book. And let me talk about the book a little bit. So Donnelly, a really, really important chord progression. It has a lot of the elements that we are going to see in hundreds and hundreds of other tunes, okay? It has one, six, two, five. It has modulations to the four. It has backdoor progressions. It has a modulation to the relative minor. It has three, six, two, five. It has so many different elements that, again, we are going to commonly see in the jazz standard language in terms of chord progressions that we're going to see. It's a no-brainer to do the first book of these progressive etudes on the tune Donnelly. So that's what we're going to be looking at all month this month, is we're just going to be hammering Donnelly. And I promise you that if you keep coming back to this tune, it's going to benefit you in so many countless other ways that none of your time is going to be wasted. Now, let's talk about some mental approaches to tune-based learning. One of the things that I think happens is what I just mentioned. You think that if you spend an extended period of time on one tune, you're wasting your time. What about all those other tunes that I'm not learning? Well, that's a very common thought that we could have pop into our head, but I can guarantee you that your time spent on one tune, spending a lot of time on one song, as opposed to jumping around and halfway learning 10 songs is going to be way more beneficial to you, okay? You want to get deep on some really, really important chord progressions rather than just skimming the surface on a whole bunch of different tunes. Um, I know this from personal experience because I used to be the person that said, hey, you've got to know hundreds of tunes. What are you doing spending your time on this one tune? You got to jump around. You got to learn this one and then this one and then this one. And then what happened was when I would go out and play, it would be like I would know halfway all these different tunes and I would just sound like crap on all of them. Now, once I changed my thinking and I started to dive really, really deep on the tunes that I knew were really important, that's when everything started to change for me. That's when I started to feel like my solos actually had some meaning. 
that's where I started to feel very, very comfortable improvising. I started to feel a level of comfort that I had never felt before. I almost got to the point where I didn't have to think about what was going on. The music was just kind of flowing out of me because I knew the chord progression, the sound of the chord progression, and I knew so many different paths through that chord progression that I could finally just let go and play without thinking what I was doing to death. And that was a really, really important moment uh, in my development as a jazz musician and made a lot of the things that I can do today possible. So don't discount this method of learning jazz. Tune-based learning is maybe one of the most important things that we can do in the practice room. So maybe you should dedicate this month or the next couple of weeks to really, really working on Donna Lee if you haven't. And maybe even if you have, maybe you should just put the blinders on and focus on this tune because I'm going to give you a bunch of material to work on over it. Let's do an experiment. Let's just see what happens if we focus on one tune for a little bit longer than you're used to spending on one tune. Now, if you've never dealt with Donna Lee before, go and find my YouTube video uh, where I break down the entire chord progression. So we won't do that here because I have a YouTube video that does that exact thing, breaks down the chord progression, tells you every harmonic movement that's happening. And uh, I will link to that in the show description so that you can find it and go watch it, especially, like I said, if you're new to this. But let's talk about the point, the thing I was thinking about in etude number one from the book. So the first thing that I do when I'm working on a tune and I'm trying to come up with concepts is I'll think vertical and horizontal. And usually the first thing that I do is I think horizontally. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you've heard me talk about this before. Horizontal playing is scale-based playing. So I'm thinking about narrow intervals. I'm thinking about using scale passages. So we know that when we're practicing scales, basically what we're doing is we're playing all intervals of a second, right? Because scales really, but most of them, 99% of them, contain intervals of either a half step or a whole step. There's a few that contain intervals of uh, minor third, but it doesn't go beyond that. Otherwise, it would be classified as an arpeggio and not a scale. So what I tried to do in this first etude was not exceed the interval of a third very often. There's a few spots where I do, but usually it's just to reset my octave if I'm running out of range or simply to just reset the phrase or reset the line in a way that I think think makes sense. But if you were to look at the intervallic structure of, you know, 95% of this etude, you would see that it's all, it's utilizing all forms of seconds, either a minor second or a major second. And then you'll see some thirds and occasionally a larger interval peppered in amongst this. So what is this going to do for us? Why does studying horizontal playing help? Well, one of the things that it's going to do is it's going to teach you to play really smooth, gradual lines that don't jump from one octave to another, but instead work their way from one register into another register. And this is a really, really important aspect of improvising. You want to be able to smoothly get from one register to the other or one part of the instrument to the other. And I think studying that as an isolated concept and trying to do that uh, as your only goal for a couple of choruses while you're improvising over a tune is a really fantastic idea. It is only by placing restrictions on ourselves that we develop this incredible freedom to do whatever we want. If we approached every practice session as like, I'm just going to do whatever I want in this practice session, we'd never really develop any skills. It would be random. We wouldn't be ever concentrating on anything that we want to get into our playing. So that's why uh, I love this kind of practicing. And this first etude is 100% based off of that horizontal style of playing. So let's check out what the etude sounds like. If you're a Patreon member, grab the PDF and follow along and notice that I'm basically using intervals of a second when we go through this. Thank you. 
there you have it, the first etude, and that one is, of course, horizontal. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and maybe what you can do this week is use the etude as inspiration to work on horizontal playing yourself. And it could be over this tune or whatever tune you're working on, but it might be easier to just use this one because we're going to be going over it all month with some different concepts. And that's what the book is going to be all about. It's going to be uh, inspiration for you to practice this stuff in the practice room on your own and come up with your own ideas, but it'll give you a starting point. It'll give you something that hopefully sounds really, really good to get things going. So remember, if you want this etude and what's going to happen over the course of the month is you're going to get four etudes out of the book with that Patreon membership, which nobody else is going to get. Now you also get every single episode that we've ever done and you get audio examples and all kinds of fun stuff. Then go over to 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners or go to patreon.com and search for the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson podcast and you get instant access to all of that stuff. Hope you're all having a great week, staying safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Have a good weekend, everybody. Bye.